Hey, Seth David here from the world-famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, bringing to you another special screencast. This time we're talking about five tools to get you organized and reduce stress starting today. Now, I've got a lot of ground to cover, and I want to make this as short as possible without sacrificing any of the real good, valuable information. So let's get right into things. I'm going to take you over here and share my screen so you can see what I'm talking about. And by the way, if you happen to be watching this on YouTube or Vimeo or somewhere where you're just watching the video, be sure and check the description for the link to the, to the full write-up because as you're seeing here, as I scroll through it quickly on my screen, there's a lot of detailed stuff in here that you can refer back to and use this as a sort of workbook to accompany this video. If you really want to go through each of these tools and kind of see which one's right for you, or you might find that more than one uh, is right for you. In fact, you're going to find out that I use um, a lot of these, actually just about all of them, on a daily basis. So my thought here, rather than give you a tutorial, which you can probably find a hundred of on any of these apps, including many that I've done, I wanted to kind of walk you through and show you how I'm using these tools, um, especially the ones that I'm using on a daily basis, right? So the first thing I want to look at is Airtable. And funny enough, what you're seeing on your screen here is one of the tools we're going to cover. I added it in as kind of a bonus. It's a sixth tool, um, which I'll cover towards the end of this. So let's go over to Airtable. And I'll show you a couple of ways that I use Airtable every single day, starting with what I like to call extreme bookmarking, okay? And what this is, this whole thing got started when Airtable released this little Chrome extension, which lets you bookmark, clip anything from the web. And at first I was using it to clip articles. And then I started finding more and more use cases, starting with Airtable itself. So here's a view I have, right? So this whole thing, by the way, for those of you who don't know anything about Airtable, this whole thing is called a base, okay? Each of these across the top is a table. And then along the side here, what you're seeing are different views that I've created. And the views are defined based on how I filtered and grouped things and sorted things and so on, right? So what I've got here is a list of Airtable bookmarks. Why? Because Airtable is organized in workspaces, but each workspace is a separate billing unit. So if I want to collaborate with you in two different workspaces, I have to pay for you twice. And I don't want to do that. You know, it's, I spent a lot of money on apps as it is, but when it came to that, I, do, I don't even, I can't even tell you why, but I, I just felt like it was, that's where I drew the line, right? I didn't want to spend extra money on extra users just to organize it through workspaces. So what I did instead was I created this little Airtable project here, and I created a concept of a workspace based on um, a category that I used to define. And this is fairly new, actually. So I've got my Nerd Enterprises Incorporated related Airtable bases and then some personal stuff, right? So, and I'll probably add more stuff like that as I go, but just to give you an idea. And so these are the Airtable bases that I access frequently, right? Um, including the one that we're looking at right now. So extreme bookmarking, as you can see, all of this is really ultimately about these URLs. So if I want to go into my 97 and up Airtable base, I can click over and as you can see right away, get in here. And the main thing I use this for are the calls. So these are the 2021 calls, right? And each one, as it gets published, gets logged with the URL, you know, the image that I've used with that post. Um, you know, this is the stuff that goes on the site after we do our two weekly calls that we do every single week. Um, as you can see, I've got some other stuff here. I've got my whole content project linked in here, right? So if I go over there, this is a log of pretty much everything I've ever published anywhere that I've published it, right? And again, same basic layout. I've got a base, I've got tables, and I've got views, right? So... <coughs> That's extreme bookmarking for you in a nutshell. As you can see, I've got my affiliates. You know, these are partner programs that I'm a part of and what have you. So very easy to do. Most of these are just based on the category that I've assigned, right? So here's category affiliates. This particular view is filtered for just that category. That's how I accomplish this, right? So, so with Airtable, it's all about the extreme bookmarking, right? <coughs> That's one part. Let's look at another use case that I've just very recently started doing because I started working out with a trainer. And so if I go back to my Airtable bookmarks down in personal, you'll find workouts. And if I go in here, this is where I log each of the different workouts that I do, the different exercises and so on. So this is the master. This just is just kind of a list of everything, right? 
But if I look at completed today, for example, I can see today's workout, and it's just filtered based on today's date, and I have to have checked it off that, that, you know, that it's been done, right? And what's cool about this is I've got the exercises in a separate table here so that each time I, you know, do a, an exercise in a workout, I'm pulling that in. So all the different workouts are linked essentially to the same exercise. So if I want to look at leg raises here, I can go and see all the different workouts where I did leg raises and I can go through and peek in and see, all right, well, the leg raises, there's no weights involved. But with other types of exercises, I can look at the sort of history of, you know, what weights I use. This is all workout number 16. So this has only been used once, but it's got each different sort of set in there, which is why you're seeing that. But this is a way that I can track all of my workouts. And it's really cool because the mobile app in Airtable is very good. So I go in here before I do my workout. My trainer actually gives me the workouts in a Google Doc. I transfer them over here because especially during the workout, I like to use the mobile app. And it's just really cool. I can go in there, do the workout. I log, you know, the weight and the reps and stuff. And then I just tap it, you know, I tap that checkbox that's all the way on the right here to indicate that I've completed that one, right? And that's how it gets from the to-do view into the today view is I've checked it off. It's now done, right? There's a calendar view here. Um, it's not really that useful for this purpose specifically, but it, for a lot of things, it is very useful, but where you can turn things into a calendar view and see, you know, kind of what's going on that way. So that's my workouts. Um, project management. Okay, we have a database that I've created. I did this for um, a group of my accounting friends, okay, where I showed if you happen to want to use Airtable instead of an, a sort of what I call out of the box project management tool, if you want to use Airtable to, uh, to do project management, it's, it's very well sort of built for that, but the difference is you have to build it, right? You start out with a blank database, as you can see over here. Let me close that. I've got products and services, right? So the different levels of bookkeeping services, tax prep, and so on. Here's where you list your clients. And then over here, you list your different jobs and projects. Over here, we have our employees. And then here we list our tasks. And this is where it all sort of gets brought together. And again, with the different views, I can look at, you know, the projects that the numbers guy is working on for me. You know, I've got that view carved up. I can look at open tasks by assignee. And this is all just based on the grouping and the filtering, right? And there's also automations in here, right? So you can create automations, which is uh, a way you can create recurring tasks, right? So you can create an automation that says, when I've marked this task complete, you know, make a copy of it, create another one with a new due date and what have you, right? So project management, Airtable lends itself beautifully to that. Again, the reason why you would want to do this as opposed to using something like ClickUp, which we're also going to be discussing here, is that um, you want something completely customized, sort of tailor-made based on your needs specifically. And a lot of times the, 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 big, the other big benefit to having built something yourself like this is that you understand it. You know how it works because you put it together. And so you know how to fix things when they go wrong or when they don't work the way you, know, you expect them to and so on. So it's somewhat, it sort of cuts down on support, right? Because again, if you've built it, you know how to kind of work the thing, okay? So uh, project management. Finally, uh, training and coaching. I have an Airtable base. Um, I think I have a sample in here that I can show you on this. Uh, let's just go into, when you click that box, you're in the main thing here. So sessions. That's the real one. Uh, automate training base. All right, so this is kind of an example of what this might look like. So in the real world, I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one training and coaching with people. And it's all automated. When somebody goes in through my website and signs up for a session or a group of sessions with me, Zapier comes in and, and it logs it. It'll log the new purchase, right? So if I go here, you'll see the event session purchase, okay? Then when they go to schedule the session, that also gets logged here via Zapier uh, for me. And then over here, I can customize it. I'll create a view for each customer, filtered, of course, for just that customer. And this becomes their log. And as you can see, what it does here, it shows the sessions purchased. When they schedule an hour, it comes in for negative one hour. Okay. And that sums it up. So it shows that there's three hours left that this customer has with me. And then the other thing I do, because I do my one-on-ones in Zoom and I record them, I put the link here. I upload the recordings to my account in box.com and I put the uh, link here so that my 
clients can download the recording once it's available. Um, so that is your training and coaching. So in short, Airtable is, it's a database that doesn't require any coding to build. You just build your tables and you link things based on the way you want to bring things together so that you can organize it dynamically and access important data. So if you have the patience to build something like this, it can be really useful because like I said, when you've built it yourself, you can kind of make it do whatever you need it to do. Bottom line, if you can conceive it, you can create it when you know how to use a tool like this and when you know how to use it really well, okay? Next, let's talk about ClickUp. All right, so ClickUp, um, by contrast with Airtable, is the out-of-the-box project management tool. It's the one that a lot of people in my world and community are using. Um, some people, I think, are using it because of me <laughs> um, because I've been using it for a couple of years. I switched away from a tool that I never thought I would switch away from um, in using uh, that I was using before. So um, really quick, what I want to show you here is what I call the everything board. Okay. Now, the everything board is my way of managing at a high level all the things I need to do, and it's also where you'll see I have my adaptation of David Allen's getting things done method for how to, well, get things done, right? So the everything board is something I've been teaching a lot lately. I just recently finished the series as of this recording on process and workflow design. Now I'm doing a course on ClickUp and I've covered this actually in each of those courses. I covered it in a bit more depth in the process and workflow design course. But real quick, this is a way that I can grab anything from the web anywhere. From The mobile app for ClickUp is great. Um, so anywhere on the web, I can grab something and I can add it. And I just, if I don't have a specific place for it, like if it's not a client specific thing, or if I just don't want to take the time to think about where specifically does this need to go, I can drop it here in the everything board. And then I've got a few things I've added beyond, you know, the David Allen getting things done, but you'll see here, where I've got the main stuff, which is today, tomorrow, this week, next week, soon, or someday. And then I've got on hold, reading and learning. I'm gonna to move to the brain, as my note here indicates, uh, which I'm also gonna be talking about in another few minutes. Uh, and then reference, right? So this is where David Allen, you talk about reducing stress. This makes it easy because it's it doesn't take a lot. It won't get me stressed out to think for two seconds about which one of these paws it belongs to. Today, tomorrow, this week, next week, and so on. If I'm not sure, I stick it in on categorized because the main thing, the main reason this process works is I know that it's part of my process. I'm going to come back to this thing several times every day so that if I don't want to sit there and figuring out how I'm going to clarify and organize it, I can stick it in on categorized and then I can clarify and organize it later on, right? So as you can see, I even have personal stuff that I'll stick in here just because it's just quick. I want to drop it in there and then deal with it later on when I have the time to deal with it. So that's just one example of how I use it. Um, and that's <coughs> one, um, one sort of area, right? And then of course, there's the actual projects. I have different clients in these different spaces where some of them are bookkeeping projects, some of them are other, you know, CFO kind of projects. And then I have also content related projects, as you can see here, where, for example, I have articles and you'll see where this very article is as I'm recording this right here under five tools to get you organized and reduce stress starting today. And just to give you an idea, if I go in here, you'll see I made a quick little checklist here for all the apps that I wanted to cover. And as I was writing the content, I checked each of these off. I've got a link here to the Google document where it's been written, that same document I showed you a few minutes ago. A link here that takes me to the folder on the web where that document is stored. And also a link to the place where this whole piece of content was inspired, which is Chris Brogan and Rob Hatch's Owner Insider Network. And that link takes you to this post. This is the post that inspired it. Rob had posted this note about how, hey, everybody you know, uses all these different apps and I'd love to see an example of how you're using the apps, which is exactly why I'm doing it in this very format that I'm doing it in, um, is based on Rob's suggestions specifically. And you'll actually see throughout the written post that accompanies this video, um, references that I've made to Rob and just using this and him and Chris as examples of how I organize information even around people that I communicate with uh, using some of these different tools. You'll see that come up uh, in the brain specifically when we cover that app. So again, ClickUp can be used to manage anything. And it's, it's again, it's beautifully built out of the box 
ready to do all this kind of stuff. And even here, even in this example I'm showing you, I'm not really taking advantage of everything that we could be using here uh, in ClickUp. I could be creating custom fields for these kind of links and all kinds of stuff. It just, that's not that important to me. This works for me just fine the way I'm doing it, right? So that's just another quick sort of example of um, how I use ClickUp, you know, for content production specifically. So, you know, in short, it's a very robust tool. It can do a lot and it's very reasonably priced. You know, you would expect something this robust to cost a lot. It doesn't. And what I would say is because there's a lot of things it does, just start with the basics so that you don't get overwhelmed. It's really well designed, in my opinion, that if there's something you're not using, it's not going to get in your way. It's not going to like show up and, you know, get in your face, so to speak, and overwhelm you. It's very, the stuff is very neatly organized and tucked away so that it's easy to access when you need it, but not in the way when you don't need it or don't know how to use it or don't know what to do with it, right? So, uh, Use ClickUp. Play with it. Like I'm going to tell you at the end of this. Just get in here and play with some of these tools if you're not sure, um, you know, which one you want to use or how you want to use it. Okay. Next up, let's talk about Dynalist. Okay. Dynalist is a really cool tool. In fact, whenever somebody comes to me and says, hey, Seth, <clears throat> I don't know which app to use. I know that there's a million apps out there. I don't know where to start. You know, can you help me out? I usually send them to Dynalist because Dynalist is a very simple to use, yet extremely versatile. And under the hood, so to speak, it's actually a very powerful tool. Okay, so on the surface, how am I using it? <clears throat> I use it for scrap paper, right? Here's a link I needed to just bookmark very quickly. I actually, what this is about is, and this is something I did using Google Keep years ago. Sometimes I will be testing something that I, this is to a page on my website, as you can see. And... I was looking at the web, the browser uh, version of the page, and it looked fine, but the mobile version wasn't looking right. So from the browser, I dropped the URL in here just because then from my mobile, I could quickly pull up Dynalist and in two seconds, tap on this link. So I use it to pass links just so I can compare mobile versus, you know, uh, web or browser versions of pages and things. So it's a very handy thing just for something simple like that. Then, uh, you know, just general notes, scrap paper. You know, I made a note here that I wanted to look at maybe buying real estate broker, QBO.com. I don't think I bought it. I don't really like that domain. Um, also, each week when I scan my documents, I do it once a week. And then I'll just name them, right? So, I'll, you know, some of them I'll just uh, I'll download and then name them, you know, so I have them for my records, like, like for PayPal statements. Um, but anything I've scanned, it's easier to me to kind of write out the name to follow my naming convention in here. And then I copy and paste, you know, I copy that to the clipboard, go edit the file name and then paste it in. It just, it, I can't explain why. I just, trust me when I tell you, a much faster way of getting the documents named. Over here was an example that I gave you in the write-up of how, you know, this started out as just a straight list, right? But then I start organizing things, um, you know, in terms of category. So it's very easy to move things around. If I decide that Slack is really under content management, you saw how quick and easy that is to move things, right? And, you know, you can sort things by whatever you need to sort them by, right? Title, A to Z or Z to A, the date, unchecked, and so on, which brings up another point is that I can actually add checkboxes to all of this very quickly, add checkbox to children, okay? And now it becomes a checklist that I can check things off as I complete them, which also brings up that if I do want to use this for any kind of project management, if this Slack here is a task, notice by having it, it has to be a space first, but hit the exclamation point and it brings up a calendar and I can even do recurring uh, tasks in here. So you can actually use this for full fledged project management. Okay. In short, this is a list on steroids. That's what DynaList was built for is just a really powerful sort of list keeping tool. Um, another thing I was using this for for a while and this process got moved over to the brain um, but where I was listing shows and movies that I wanted to see. If somebody made a suggestion and said hey you got to check out Yellowstone I added it here as a show that I wanted to make sure I watch. So the next time I'm finished with a show that I'm streaming this is where I go to see what do I want to watch next. Right. But like I said, I, I eventually moved this process over. Quickly on the left here, you can see these are different documents and you can also create folders. One thing that's really cool about this though is it's really easy to 
transfer things uh, sort of in between. So here's something I did. Um, I just wanted to take a quick note about a 97 and up call that we did, right? But if I wanted to, I could take this whole group starting from calls and I can move it in, I can make it into its own document, okay? At the same time, I can move this all back into uh, 97 and up, right? So going that way is a little bit more challenging, but basically what I can do is just take all this um, or go to 97 and up. Probably move it there. And then just cut and paste it so it's back in there, right? So a little bit harder to go the other way. But generally speaking, it's very easy to move things around here and get things where you want them. So it's the perfect way to just brainstorm, just drop a bunch of stuff in a list and then move them around, reorganize them however you need to. All right. Next up on our list is the brain. All right. So let's talk about the brain. Now, this one, this will take you to the web. And by the way, this what you're seeing here, this little project board from Bubble Up, um, you have the link to in the write up. But for the brain, I'm just going to go, the brain has a desktop app. It, it lives in the cloud, but the desktop app obviously syncs it all over. And it works really well. I, I use this across several different computers, and it's very slick. And I'm normally not a fan of desktop tools that sync to a cloud location because you get conflicts and it's clunky. But this actually, somehow they've solved for that really well. I have not had an issue with that. And as you can see, and as I mentioned in the detailed write-up, I use this for what I call my operating system. Now, backing up for a minute, every, every, every other tool on this list is basically linear in nature, right? Folders and subfolders, uh, rows and columns, that kind of thing. Um, it's linear. It has to be in most cases. But what the brain has done, and you can really kind of see that already from what I have on my screen, is the brain has created a way to build a knowledge base, which is what this really is. A lot of people call it a mind map. It's much, much more than a mind map. It's a way to build a knowledge base where you can create the geometric links that really exist in terms of how we think about things, right? Let me give you a perfect example. So this post, as I've said, it was inspired by Chris Brogan and Rob Hatch from Owner Insider, right? Rob Hatch specifically, right? So let's search out Rob. And so I recently started creating a section in here under people, people that I talk to, communicate with, what have you. You know, yes, I have a CRM. It's a separate app. I use Nimble CRM. You can actually see uh, evidence of that here. But I thought it'd be cool in a tool like this to show the different, again, geometric relationships between the people that I communicate with and other things. So, for example, Rob, you can see I have connected to Chris Brogan here because i that's how I know Rob is through Chris Brogan. I know them through Owner Insider, which is their program that I belong to, which, by the way, I highly encourage you to join. It's great. Um, you can see that from Owner Insider, I have linked here Mighty Networks. That's the tool that they're using for their community. So a few minutes ago when I showed you that the post that inspired this, um, that's in owner insider that's in their community that's built on mighty networks right so and i really like this so as i'm working in any kind of environment i'm often paying attention and saying hey what's that tool they're using right and i forget where i found it probably scrolling way to the bottom somewhere i figured out that what they're using is this tool called mighty networks right so um so I made a note of it because I wanted to check it out for myself. I thought this is cool, but my like my 97 and up people would kill me if I suggested moving them over from Slack. But in any case, you can see how I can get this all linked. So Owner Insider is how I know Rob and Chris, right? They introduced me to Mighty Networks, which if I go over here, you can see is under app research, right? And now that gets you into a whole different area of apps that I'm researching and things like that. So that's what I mean when I talk about geometric links. And if I go over to Rob, I've actually got a link here to Rob's website. Because what happened is I reached out to Rob through Owner Insider. And I said, hey, if I wanted to link to you in an article, where would be the best place to link to? And he said, oh, link to my website. I didn't know he had a website because I only know him as a guy who works with Chris Brogan. right? And over here what I did was I added a link that takes me directly to that chat that I had with Rob where I asked him that very question. So as you saw, I right clicked and I chose open. 
if I click on it, as you also saw a second ago, it will open it in the brain's own kind of browser that it has. So here it is. I asked Rob, where would I link to? He said, robhatch.com works. Perfect. Thanks. So what's cool, as you can see, is now I've got that indexed. So if I want to jump back into my conversation with Rob, I have a quick way to get there. So it's also extreme bookmarking here, um, but it's with a different kind of use case in mind. For example, if I go to daily startup, it's kind of bookmark clusters, if you will, right? These are all apps that I like to start off with every day. Penzu is a journal I like to write in. It's a digital journal. The rest is pretty obvious. I have my calendar. Of course, I have ClickUp. There's Kajabi, which is my website and my whole sales engine. <coughs> Dynalist, as you can see. I do actually drink my own Kool-Aid. I keep a, a Google Sheet handy just for scrap paper, just so I have a quick place to go when I want to sketch out a calculation or something in a spreadsheet. I like doing that here. Um, this is my Airtable bookmarks project that you've already seen. And this is a document I keep in my main kind of my drive folder in Google Drive with content ideas. Because a lot of times as I'm starting my day, my brain is flooded with thoughts. I'm thinking about all kinds of things. And sometimes ideas pop up. And I want a place where I can go real quick and get access to those. As you can see here, I've got other things that make sense. I have my goals here for 2021 linked. You can tell there's a Google document attached. It's actually a spreadsheet with a little bit of a financial model. That's how I roll. Right, Banking takes me to a thought that has links to all of my websites so I can just quickly get logged in to all of my uh, bank account and credit card account websites so that I can see where I'm at financially in a glance. Right, And then Bubble Up is here because it's a recent sort of addition. It was inspired by that same post uh, with Rob on Owner Insider. Uh, a young woman by the name of Tina Darusha had mentioned her apps and she mentioned Bubble Up. And I'm like, I never heard of Bubble Up. And I started looking and I, you know, end result is I included it as a bonus in this post because it's not an app that I'm, that I can really show you how I'm quote unquote using it. I'm just starting to play with it because it frankly just looks really cool, right? Um, this is here because it's a client who has given me an email on his domain and I need a reminder to check it daily because I'm not in that habit yet. So every day I do go here and that way, and you can see it's lit up nicely, so it gets my attention every day so that I don't forget, right? So, so we have, you know, like I said, like group bookmarking. And then finally, we have the brain box. Now, the brain box is, you can see it right up here, and right now it's empty. But if I wanted to bookmark um, that converse, this the post, for example, that inspired this very article that I'm recording this very video for, I'm here on the website and there's a Chrome extension. I click on that. It's adding it. Okay. Now I can close this back to the brain. Okay. And let's go to Rob Hatch. Might as well add it under him. I'm not sure what's going on there. Let's try that again. Rob. Okay. And then I'll click on the brain box here. It'll take a second to realize that it's there, there it is, and then I can just add it, right? And so now I've got a link under Rob directly to that um, that discussion that we had going on there. Now it kind of grabbed a lot of text from the title. So I can click in here and I'll just highlight the whole thing and say <coughs> post regarding how I'm using apps, etc. Right. And boom. And then it puts the, you know, this is the notepad as you've no doubt put together by now. Every thought has a little notepad here where you can add notes and other kinds of things. Right. <clears throat> so very, very long link here is essentially what this became. Right. So let's just rename this and say link to article. Right. Because that's what it'll do. You can attach links that way as well. I could have just grabbed the URL and stuck it there and it would have had the same effect. But the point is you can clip anything and it works really well on the mobile app too. So I can easily and quickly grab anything anywhere, add it into the brain box. And I love that as a capture process because even click up, I have to do a couple more things to give it context. It's not as quick and easy. This is literally one click and it sticks it in the brain box and then I can go back to it later and clarify and organize the stuff. Right. So I love that. I love how easy that makes it to just kind of uh, bookmark something. Uh, last, uh, but definitely not least, is NoteJoy. NoteJoy is an Evernote killer. I, Long story short, I fell out of love with Evernote a long time ago. And I 
have been in and out of OneNote, but OneNote, the way Microsoft has things with all these different accounts, I'm going to have my Windows Live email, which is a Microsoft account from 100 years ago. Then at one point, I, I wanted it linked to my Nerd Enterprises email, which I did. And somehow I've gotten a couple of others in the mix over the years. And so now I can't figure out which notebooks are where in my Microsoft world. And it was just too painful to try and like somehow figure out how to consolidate all of it. So I said, you know what? Forget about it. I just need a good note-taking app. And I was reading an article that got my attention because it was basically like the top five note-taking apps, um, according to whoever the author was. I can't even tell you where that article was. I don't remember. It wasn't that important. I just got note joy out of it. And they, the way they wrote up note joy was that it was especially good on collaboration. So whatever, it got my attention, and I started looking at it. And because I had gone back into OneNote for the first time in a while to create a notebook to take notes on David Allen's getting things done as I'm going through the book. I don't just read them. As you can see, I take notes on them. And I wanted a good place where I can go to take notes that would be easy to use. But most importantly, that would work seamlessly whether I'm on my mobile device because sometimes I'll be reading on a tablet and I can take notes on my mobile device. I wanted a seamless experience no matter which sort of platform I was using to access the note-taking app. Now, OneNote is pretty good that way. So NoteJoy, the way it was written up about being good on collaboration, I thought, there's a clue. This might be exactly what I'm looking for. And sure enough, it appears to be. I mean, how to use it, very, very easy. You can add notes, notebooks. Um, you can have uh, private notebooks, which just means you haven't shared it with anyone. And then you can have shared notebooks. So you can invite people in to collaborate. And the collaboration works really nicely in real time. Um, when you're, you know, when you, when you and somebody else, let's say, are working on a document. So NoteJoy does a much better job than I can do at this point of explaining all the different ways it can be used and how it can be useful. Um, I just, I needed something for this one specific purpose, and I love it for that. So, so that's NoteJoy in a nutshell. And then finally, the bonus, Bubble Up. Like I said, um, my friend from Chris and Rob's Owner Insider had mentioned Bubble Up. That's this tool here. And what it appears to be is, if you know what Google Keep is, it's like Google Keep, but with way better visuals. And it's very intuitive. You can go, let me just quickly go back here just to show you some examples. I'll show you their examples. So you create these folders, right? This is a folder called Examples from Bubble Up, And then there's folders within that, right? So I go to East Coast Eats, let's say. And then there's different folders depending on the city or whatever. So you can, it's just very intuitive. You can organize it and it's very visual. You got the background pictures. Um, and that's what I did here when I wanted to build this is five tools to get you organized. You know, it's very easy to update and edit these things. Uh, here's, a, here's a notepad. So here's an example of how you can just write notes, right? And then these, you literally just, you can go to the URL, press control C and come in here and press control V and it will... It will go pull the metadata from that website that you pasted in to create these. And then some of them, like Dynalist, it didn't pull a logo or anything. So I just edited this, found their logo on the web, and uploaded it. Right, And as you can see, I can change the title, add a description, whatever I want. So it's just another really cool app um, that I'm just starting to play with myself that it just looks like it's a cool and fun app to use, which I'll find a use case for, hopefully. Because sometimes I look at an app like this and I think it doesn't solve a problem I don't already have solved, but it still might be a cool way to do something when the use case comes up. So I'll play with it. You know, and I've already got some ideas about how you can take something like this and you can share it. It's very easy to collaborate. I've provided you with the link so you can actually get a view-only look at this very, um, <clears throat> I don't even know what you call this, a board or a folder. I'm not sure. I haven't gotten that deep with Bubble Up yet. But bottom line is it's a really cool way, it appears, to capture information, and then it suggests relevant information. Like after I added NoteJoy, it looks like uh, it found this thing uh, about NoteJoy from ProductHunt.com. And then, of course, there's NoteJoy.com itself and so on. So it will help you find – it's a good research tool because it will help you find other relevant things on the web based on the content that you've added here. And again, just very intuitive, very easy to move things around. You know, you can see very quickly how to sort things or you can put manual sort so you can put things in whatever order you like. So, my friends, that is more than 30 minutes on five tools to get you organized and reduce stress starting today. As always, I hope that you learned something here and had some fun along the way. If you do have any questions, I'm pretty sure you know how to find me or I'm pretty sure you know how to post a comment 
wherever you are, wherever you happen to be watching this. And don't forget to check the description for a link to the full detailed write-up with all the screenshots. And once you get there and you get into my website, you can post your comments right there. And that's the best way to get my attention. And of course, if you need any help with any of this, you can uh, reach out onto the Work With Seth page and schedule an hour with me and I can walk you through anything you might need help with from choosing one of these apps to implementing one of these apps for your company today.